Hello students, welcome to the session on basics of computer knowledge. Okay, so as you have seen on the thumbnail, it is related to RRB JE exam in specific. But let me tell you something. Uh, you can think of other subjects in other subjects in different way, but this subject is different from other subjects. I'll tell you why. If you see the title is basics of computer knowledge. Okay, here our target is not only computer science students. Okay, for computer science students, it gives an idea how to revise or what to revise. How to revise or what to revise. If you are from a non-computer science background, this session will give you what to study or how to study. So, other subjects are very specific to computer science stream. But this particular subject is useful for both computer science student and non-computer science students also. Now, I'll tell you why I am saying this sentence. Okay, if you take any competitive exam, even if you have, if even if you are from mechanical, civil, triple E or ECE, there is some section of questions. They are coming from this particular subject. Title can be different, like information technology or basics of computer knowledge or computer knowledge. Whatever the title it can be, they are expecting some basic knowledge from this computer science subject. Whatever the concepts and content that are being covered in this particular subject from in various competitive exams for CS students and non-CS students that we are going to discuss in this session. Okay, so that's why I have added this title, learn something about everything, learn something about everything. Hope you understood why I have added this title. It's not about learning the entire computer science. Here we focus on the breadth, not on the depth. Whatever the computer science subjects are there, whatever the basic knowledge required from each computer science subject, that we learn in the breadth first manner, not in the depth manner. Fine? So, in the RRBJE, since this session is related to RRBJE, what I'll show you, what are the major topics that the major topics that have that they have listed on the syllabus sheet? One is evolution. What do they mean by evolution? How computers are evaluated across the generations, how computers are evaluated across the generations. Let me give you one sentence idea on this topic. Initially, whatever the computers they have made, they automated the process, but they are very expensive, they are very, they have, they are very huge, they were very huge and they were releasing so much of heat and they consume more energy. And they are, uh, they are more machine friendly than humor friendly. After, uh, after uh, enhancing the computers, across different generations, from first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, currently we are targeting for fifth generation. They become more human friendly than machine friendly. So what I'm trying to say, in the evolution of computers, we'll learn how computers are enhanced from oldest version to latest version. This is what we focus in this evolution chapter. And the second chapter is hardware. In this hardware chapter, we will focus on what are the input output devices and most frequent and most important questions from this particular topic is they'll just give you a device name based on the functionality of device you should classify it as classify it as whether it is an input device or output device then other topic is memory in the memory the most important topic they were focusing is type of the memory whether it is sequential or non sequential and the other one is other questions are based on size like terabyte megabyte they are framing some questions on units of the memory like how do you measure the memory fine the third topic is software here coming to software the major question they are asking is type of software majorly they are classified as system software and application software the question is very simple they simply give you a software name based on the usage of that software you should you, you should be able to classify whether it is a system software or application software Fine. And the fourth topic is internet. Fine. So this internet topic, we you have so many other subjects in the RRB JE syllabus, like web technologies there, web technologies is there, and data communication networks is there. If you are from a computer science student, trust me, if you have studied computer networks in your graduation, then you can easily answer any question from this topic because there are no in-depth questions from this particular topic. Okay. So 
Till now we have discussed two points. What was my first point? It is not only for computer science student. This particular subject, basics of computer science, is for both CS students and non CS students. And it's not only for RRB JE aspirants. It is for every competitive exam aspirant. Why? Because in all the exams from this computer science topics, they are asking basic questions. So after analyzing most of the papers, I have segregated or I have chosen some topics where they are focusing on. Fine. So as per RRBJ syllabus, these are the major topics: evolution of computers, hardware, software, and internet. Fine. Then, now what is our strategy by learning this subject? I'll tell you how I am going to take this session forward so that you'll get a clarity. Initially. From each topic, I have listed four topics, right? From the each topic, we will see what are the PYQs they are asking, okay? What I'll do, I'll try to make you understand what are the topics they are focusing on. What we are trying to learn? We are trying to focus on what are the topics that has been asked till now. So after analyzing the pattern, you will get to know they are focusing on some major topics or some major concepts every year. So there's a high chance that they'll ask the question from same topic again and again. And understand this point. I am not saying they repeat the question. I'm talking about the area that they're touching. You got my point, right? I'm repeating this again. I don't say they'll repeat the same question every year. But whatever the area they're tapping last year, they're tapping this year also. So based on this pattern, what I'm trying to do, based on this PYQs, I'll tell you, areas to be focused in the syllabus what are the areas to be focused like what is the content you need to revise before going to exam or what is the content you need to learn if you are a non CS student what is the content you need to learn that's we are going to discuss after that we will see some practice questions okay now I'm repeating what we are going to do some PYQs are there. Based on PYQs, we will decide the areas to be focused. What are the major topics in the syllabus that are to be focused? Later, after deciding that, I have made some practice questions. They cover some of the previous year questions and they also cover what are the questions that can come in upcoming exams. I already told you, they are not repeating the question, but they are giving the question from same topic again and again. Okay, let us say if they can make 10 questions from that particular topic, if they have covered six questions in the past exam, the remaining four questions, what they can make, they may ask in the coming exams. That is the simple strategy here. Hope you understood this point. Let us say, they have asked who is regarded as the father of computers, right? So the answer is Charles Babes. Fine. Now, what do I mean by practice here? If you Find the, uh, if you can search in the Google or any other book resource or any resource, if you just find the father of computers is Charles Babbage, that is not enough for your preparation. Fine. Since you are uh, giving this exam, you are giving so many competitive exams, what should be your focus? So they are asking something like father of computers. Fine. If you are writing any competitive exam while preparing, you should understand the strategy. Next time, they may not ask father of computers. They may ask, who is the father of internet, www? Or they may ask, who has invented computer? They may change the question. So after reading this question, they have asked this question in RRBJ 2014 Redshift. Fine. But while practicing, what should be your strategy? It is not just revising this question or finding the answer of this question. It is just understanding. Okay, this year they have asked father of computers. Now I need to, I need to recall or I need to study about all the major contributors are scientists of the computer science. You know Alan Turing? Alan Turing is like Alfred Nobel of computer science. Alan Turing is like Alfred Nobel of computer science. Whoever has given so many contributions in the computer science, they will be given Turing Award. So hope you understood what I'm trying to say. It's not about just revising this particular question. When you see this kind of questions, you should be able to revise all the concepts like who is the father of internet, who is Alan Turing. Alan Turing is a major, co major contributor in the computer science. If you can recall this concept, not only this, whenever you see some topic, you should be able to recall all the concepts which are similar to this question. Hope this point is clear for you. I'm going for next question now. Then, 
fifth generation computers are likely to exhibit now try to understand this question they have asked something about fifth generation computer in the introduction i have already told you there are five generations of computers first generation second generation third generation fourth generation fifth generation fine in the each generation what i'm trying to say now i can tell you for this particular question artificial intelligence heuristic behavior advanced parallel processing all of the above all these are expectations from a fifth generation computer and in a single word it should be it should be able to think on its own it is its expectation think on its own but now it is not only about revising this particular generation computer i am clearly telling you there are five generations of computers what are the different questions possible from these generations that we will see in the next slides and at the end i'll give you a conclusion how to practice this particular topic now we have understood they are asking about some scientists or contributors in the field of computer science fine so when you see this question you need to recall all this information then what is the next question in the next question they are asking about some particular question about fifth generation what i'm telling you so now you need to recall entire knowledge about all the five generations of computers let us go through next questions then you will understand why i am saying this sentence many times which of the following computer languages used for artificial intelligence now in the previous question they have asked you what is the expectation of fifth generation computer right so there you have listed all the three expectations artificial intelligence heuristic behavior and advanced parallel processing in the next question they are asking what is the computer language that is used for artificial intelligence so while reading about or while studying about fifth generation computer you should be able to recall this point also prolog that is program logic program logic is the programming language that is used for artificial intelligence now look at other languages one thing for sure ms office is not a language so it cannot be answer at all this is also one of the things you need to uh you need to be very careful while solving competitive exams you can answer any of these languages because all of these are programming languages but coming to this particular thing ms office is not a programming language it is a application software so you can answer any of other languages but you cannot answer this at all because it is not a programming language first of all then fortran is nothing but formula translation what is the full form of fortran formula translation so it is used for research purposes it is used for research purposes then cobol is common oriented common business oriented language common business oriented language fine this is not for research purposes this is for business the name itself is saying it is for businesses so if you understand while solving the first question i asked you to recall all the cont content related to five generations of computer while answering the second question you understood something like for each purposes we have different languages in this particular question they have asked about artificial intelligence that's why i have chosen prolog but if they ask about research purposes then you should choose fortran because fortran is formula translation so formula translation which is used for uh, sorry research purposes if they ask about business purposes then you should choose cobol that is common business oriented language so what i am trying to say here while practicing any of these these basic basics of computer knowledge kind of subjects after learning one question you should frame your own questions okay what can be the other questions that can be asked from this topic and try to search answers for those questions fine so here initially we are focusing on what to study for this particular subject so what i am telling you if you see one question like this try to frame all the questions which are based on this topic in the similar way this is related to programming languages and their uses so based on the based on the purpose of the uh, task we we choose the programming language fine we'll go for the next question then who is considered as the father of the computer okay and this is the question that is repeated again the first question was also based on the same concept they have asked who is the uh, father of the computers here also they have asked father of the computers that's why i'm saying if they are bored of this question because they have already asked this two times next time they may ask about alan turing or they may ask about some other scientist who is popular in computer science fine so you should be able to understand all these scientists what are their contributions what are the spe uh, what are their spe specialty in this particular domain that you need to understand fine then what is the name given to the molecular cell scale computer uh, just see this here we are not focusing on any particular generation we are just focusing on these computers 
like based on the size of the computer or capacity of the computer or performance of the computer, we'll classify them as this. Okay. So my my uh, strategy is very simple while uh, solving these kind of questions. First, we'll solve this question. So molecular scale computer is nothing but nano computer. So 10 power minus 9. If it is 10 power minus 15, it is even smaller than molecular. It will be considered as femto computer. Super computer is based on the performance. It gives high performance. Okay. And this micro computer is related to 10 power minus 6 size. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, here they have mentioned molecular scale computer. That, that's why I have chosen nano computer. If they mention something smaller, even smaller than nano computer, then we should go for femto computer. If they go for the performance, then we should choose supercomputer. If they go something bigger than uh, nano computer, then we should go for micro computer. So our strategy is very simple. While solving any questions, we should be able to understand other options also. And we should be able to focus on the topic they are touching. Okay. Next year, they don't repeat the same question, but there are high chances that they repeat, so they, they give same question from this particular topic. Get, right? We'll go for the next question. Univac and Univac computers are examples of the. Now, just try to understand this question. In the fifth generation computer, what was their question? What are the expectations of fifth generation computer? In this question, what they are asking? They have given two computer names and both of them are related to first generation computer. It is just a memory based question. But what you need to understand from this session? So in the next year, in this, in this year, what they have given? They have given two computer names and they asked for which generation they belong to. Okay, Computers are examples of the first generation computer. What was the previous question? They have given fifth generation computer and they have asked for what is the expectation from fifth generation computer. Now, you frame another question. What are the examples of fifth generation computer? Right? Or what are the examples of fourth generation computers? Or what are the expectations from fourth generation computer? Hope you understood what I'm trying to say. This year, they have given examples from the first generation computer. Next year, they may give two example computers from second generation, two example computers from ge second generation. They ask the same question. They give some uh, second generation computer as example name and they ask computers are examples of the. Then you should be able to understand, okay, these two names are not there in first generation computer. These two computers are from second generation computers. That's why I need to choose the second generation computer as the answer. Fine. Then integrated circuits are used in. Now, let me tell you, I'm already, I have already told you there are five generations of computer. Okay. In the first generation, we have used vacuum tubes. These are very huge, expensive and release so much heat. In the second generation computer, we have used transistors. In the third generation computer, we have used microprocessors. Okay. In the fourth generation computer, we have used VLSI. In the fifth generation computer, we are using ULSI. All these are basic blocks. This is what I am trying to explain from the starting of the session. In this particular question, they have asked where the integrated circuits are used. Fine. Sorry for this. In the second generation, we have used um, integrated circuits. Then we have used transistors. Fine. Here we have used integrated circuits. Here we have used transistors. Fine. Like this. So try to understand in the different generations of computers, they have used different basic blocks. You hope you understood this point. What I'm trying to say. So they have asked about integrated circuits in this question. Next year, they may ask about vacuum tubes. Okay. So what you need to understand here. Okay. This year, they asked about the vacuum tubes. So this year, they asked about the integrated circuit. You will mark something as the answer. Next year, they may ask the same question by replacing integrated circuits with vacuum tubes. But what is the thing? As a student, what is the thing you need to learn? Okay. They have asked about basic blocks of your particular generation. So from each generation, I need to understand what are the basic blocks of each generation. This is what you need to understand. Fine. Then, transistors were used in. I told you, in the previous year, they have asked about integrated circuits. So this year, they are asking about transistors. Next year, they may ask about vacuum tubes, like this. Hope you got this point. So at the end of this, at the end of this particular topic, evolution of computers, I'll give you a practice table where you can recall all the required concepts. Okay? Just look at this question. Which of the following is India's first 3D printed humanoid robot? Okay? Here, they are focusing on 3D printed humanoid robot. Okay, the answer is Manav. But it is not enough for preparation. 
it is not enough for preparation the first you need to understand whether other names are related to robotics or not then if it is related to robotics is the sentence in the question is related to that robot or not okay kempa is a assistant in airport assistant in airport you can find this kempa in bangalore airport okay what does it do when you go for airport it just assist you it is like a, it acts like a human but it is a robot so where do you find kempa it is a air hostess assistance okay it is like a air hostess now try to understand this this year they have asked about a robot which is a 3d printed humanoid robot because of this particular line i have chosen manu as the answer fine then next year they may ask like which which robo what says assistant in airport then you should be able to choose this kempa as the answer if you just recall, if you just study that okay manav is a 3d humanoid robot it doesn't help you in the next year exam because they have already asked this question they may not be interested to ask this question again next year they may ask you question about kempa or next year they may ask you question about indro or next year they may ask you question about daksh okay then daksh is like you know when bomb squad find find any bombs or something they need to dismantle them otherwise they may explode so this daksh is a robot which drdv has created what it can do it is a robo which can dismantle flammable items or bombs so what is the advantage here if a human tries to dismantle or dispose a bomb if it explodes during the process you we lose we lose a valuable human life if you use robot instead of a human you can uh, you can save the life of a human you got the point right so if they ask what is the robot that that can dismantle the bombs then instead of kempa and manu you will choose daksh as the answer because you have already you now you know daksh is a daksh is a robot which can dismantle the bombs next indro is a robo and there is an interesting story behind it the person who has made it has inspired from a movie which is done by rajnikanth he has watched that movie and from the human generated waste human generated electrical waste he has created this gadget okay so this indro is being developed by indian okay how uh, he has inspired from a movie called robo which is done by rajnikanth how he has generated it he doesn't do anything costly he thought he, he has think he has thought out of the box he has just used the electronic gadgets which, which are generated by human electrical waste he has made this indro so what i am trying to say here while solving this question there are two ways one is just search this particular line in the google okay there is a 3d printed humanoid robot that's name is mano in this way also you can do it but it doesn't help you in the preparation what should be your preparation okay let us check about other options also kempa is also a robot which is which is which works in a airport then daksh is also a robot which can dismantle bombs then indro is also a robot it is being designed from electrical waste got the point right if you prepare in this way the advantage is in the next year 90% of the time they don't focus on the manav again because they have already asked this question they may ask question from any of the other options then you will be able to score that mark even one mark mark one mark matters a lot fine right? then the the first computer made available in commercial use was now just think logically let us say if you have uh, i told you there are five generations of computer first generation second generation third generation fourth generation fifth generation okay one thing you need to focus on what are the basic blocks that are used in each generation another thing is what are the example computers of that particular generation then how speed has affected how performance has affected okay these are the things you need to focus on each and every generation fine now if you know the example computers of each generation let us say if the question paper setter has given three computers from other generations okay let us say this computer is from second generation this computer is from third generation this computer is from fourth generation so to be specific it is from first generation i am just giving you example now if you know all these computers are from different generation what is the logic if it is the first computer it should be from first generation if you know this uni vic is a first generation computer 
then you can easily answer this question even if you don't know the answer why because second generation computer cannot be the first computer third generation cannot, computer cannot be the first computer fourth generation computer cannot be the first computer the first generation computer only can be the first computer so what i'm trying to say if you can remember all the example computers of each generation if the options are given like that other computers are from different generations only one option is from first generation then you can easily choose the first generation computer which is in the option will be the first hour computer okay for this particular question the answer is first uh, uni vac it is a first generation computer and eni ac is also first generation computer but compared to eni ac uni vac has been invented first fine then now i i already told you my strategy is very simple now after looking at those questions just recall these points most of the time they are focusing on in the evaluation of computer chapter what they are focusing on we have five generations of computer we have basic blocks in each computer we have the we have example uh, example computers in each generation how speed is affected how performance is affected what are the expectations from each generation computer those, those are the things that we need to recall so based on that what i have done for the, for this particular chapter it's not only solving previous year questions what are the possible questions that can come in coming years you got the point right based on that concept i have made this table see look at this table so how what we are going to fill in the first generation computer what are the basic blocks that are that we are going to use what are the years that are active okay this this point they have they haven't touched till now but in the future they may touch this is what i'm saying see one thing is for sure they are interested in in the evolution of computer chapter what they are interested they are interested in five generations of computer what is the knowledge that we need to gain from this five generations of computer computer that i have made in this table so let us practice this particular table so that it can help you in gain the marks in the future exams fine so why i have made this table i am telling you again what we have done we have gone through some previous year questions then we understood that okay they are focusing on different generations uh, generations of computers fine so in each generation what i need to learn what are the basic blocks that have been used in that particular generation what are the years that computer has been in active and what are the type of operating system till now they haven't asked any question from this particular topic but i have listed it here why because they are, they are interested in generations of computers so you need to learn the required knowledge or related knowledge related to uh, all the generations of the computer that's why i have added this particular column here then speed and reliability okay obviously if you are enhancing the computers speed and reliability will increase from the first generation to fifth generation fine and if they talk about heat generated the first generation create more heat compared to any other generation okay so it will decrease if you talk about any negative thing that is heat or something it will decrease okay that's why it will be high for first generation computer and low for second generation computer so if you talk about heat kind of negative things or time consuming or expensive okay cost if you talk about heat heat and cost they will be more expensive or they re they release more heat in the earlier generations but in the current generations they will release less but if you talk about cost two things like speed and reliability they will be uh, less in they will be less in earlier generations but they will be more in previous generations sorry current generations why because we try to enhance our computers okay so let us start filling this table so they'll come in a random manner okay so first i'll ask you what are the basic blocks that have been used in first generation computer then the answer is sorry for this vacuum tubes i already told you in the each generation we need to understand what are the basic blocks so while answering this question you should recall all other concepts what are the basic blocks in second generation what are the basic blocks in third generation what are the basic blocks in fourth generation what are the basic blocks in fifth generation these are the things you need to recall fine if you see here type of os so the question can in the exam the question can be asked in this way what are the what is the type of os that is being used in fifth generation computer so you can answer it artificial intelligence based or parallel computing based fine now the next question is what is the sec what is the basic block of second generation computer the answer is transistors and this particular question has been asked in the previous year also that's what i'm saying so they have asked question about transistors this year but in the next year they may ask question about what are the basic blocks that are used in first generation so we have practiced that that as well fine then now they are asking what is the 
type of OS that is being used in fourth generation computer than real time or distributed operating system. Fine, real time or distributed operating system. So what do you mean by real time? If you submit a task, if it has to be completed in strict deadline, strict deadline, like ra rocket launching, any strict deadline after then, they will be considered as real time. Like you don't expect or you don't uh, want any delay to be done. If it has to be completed at 901, there shouldn't be any microsecond or millisecond difference also. You got the point, right? So real time means uh, very strict deadline computer. It cannot delay any process. Fine? Then. So they may ask some question like this. When were the third generation computers were active? So the years active in the 1965 to 71, the third generation computers have been used. Fine? Then. When were the first generation computers were active? From 1946 to 1959, first generation computers were active. Then, what is the type of operating system that is being used in first generation computer? That is batch OS. Okay, let me tell you how batch OS works. Currently, if you submit four tasks at a time, okay, let me erase the things on the board. Fine. If you submit four tasks at a time, in the current processors, we are having different CPUs, okay? If you see here, CPU 1 is there, CPU 2 is there, CPU 3 is there, CPU 4 is there. So all these processes will be assigned to different processors. They can multitask. This is the capacity of current processors. But in the initial days, we used to have only one processor, okay? Here, job 1, job 2, job 3, job 4, okay? Initially, job 3 will be submitted to processor. Other, jo other jobs will be waiting in the queue. Okay, it's not about, it, it's not that job three or job one. One job will be submitted to processor. While processor is serving to this particular job, other jobs will be waiting in the queue. Okay, so all these process will be known as batch. If there are some other process which have less priority, let us say uh, S1, S2, S3. So these have been kept in different queue because these have different priorities. All these, be considered, all these will be considered as different batch. It's not only about priority, it's based on the type of job also. So based on the type of job or priority of the job, what we'll do? We'll just group the jobs and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call each group, each group as the batch. That's why this particular operating system is known as batch operating system. I'm re repeating this point again. We'll combine all the jobs based on the type of the job or priority of the job. And we'll call each group as the batch. For this reason, this particular operating system is known as batch operating system. Fine. Then, what can be the question? When the second generation computers were active? So the answer is 1959 to 1965. Fine. Then, what are the basic blocks that have been used in third generation computer? So answer, the answer is integrated circuits. In the fourth generation computer, they have used VLSA, that is very large scale integrated circuits. So they have taken integrated circuits only, but integrated circuits can contribute to computation power. So what they have done? they have taken more integrated circuits and they try to place it on a single chip. What is the strategy? One integrated circuit can give you some computation power. If you can place more integrated circuits on a single chip, you can, you can generate more computing power. They have understood this thing and they have, they have kept so millions and millions of uh, integrated circuits on a single chip to, uh, to produce more computing power. So that's how they have created this fourth generation computer. Fine. Then, now in the fifth generation computer, they have used ultra large scale integrated circuits. So they have used the same strategy. If they have used millions here, they have used trillions here. You understood the strategy, right? From the second, third generation onward, what they are doing, then they are using the integrated circuits only. But how many number of integrated circuits they are using? Based on that number, they have increased the computing power and they have moved from one generation to another generation. Fine. So what you need to understand, in the third generation also integrated circuits were there. In the fourth generation also integrated circuits were there. In the fifth generation also integrated circuits were there. But where they are differing? Here integrated circuits are in hundreds. In the next generation they move to millions. In the next generation they move to trillions. What is the advantage they are getting? By increasing the number of integrated circuits that can be placed on a chip, they are increasing the, they are increasing the computing power. 
and the fifth generation computer uh, computers are current compu current computers okay they are currently developing fifth generation computers before that they were using fourth generation computers fine then in the second generation computer they were using time sharing systems so what do i mean by time sharing systems okay let us say there are three jobs j1 j2 j3 and there is a processor what this processor does it will take the first job it will serve for some time and it will move this uh, first job to waiting queue then it will take the second job it will serve it, it will serves j2 for some time and it will move it to waiting queue again same thing with j3 also it will move it to job queue again now it will check whether j1 has left with some task or not if j1 is still left it will give the second chance to j1 later it will give the second chance to j2 it will give the second chance to j3 while giving the second chance if the doesn't need it they will not they will not uh, participate if they need it they will again participate okay here what we are doing here we are sharing the time we among all the jobs that's why this particular computers are known as time sharing systems so what is the type of os that is being used in third generation computer that is multi programming fine so what you need to understand here what is the our strategy i have we have seen some of the previous year questions that have been asked from this evolution of computers then what we have understood we have understood that okay even though they are not repeating the questions they are focusing on solely topic what was the topic what are the properties of all the five generations of computer so how we did our practice we have taken all the five generations of com computer and we we have collected all the vital information that is related to each generation what is the vital information here what are the basic blocks used in that particular generation what were the years that the particular generation computers were active what was the type of operating system that particular uh, uh, the generation was using and what was the speed and reliability of that particular generation fine then this is one kind of practice if you see apart from that uh, five generations of computers thing there is one thing they are asking about the example of each generation see here i have listed so many computer names okay sir why you have listed these many computer names if you remember they have asked this question this is the first ever computer that has been generated eni ac fine next year instead of eni ac they may ask any of these questions and here each computer is related to some particular generation you got my point right here i have listed more than 20 computer names what is your task here okay let me tell you something before this i'll strongly suggest you to take the screenshot of this particular table it will help you a lot okay it will help you a lot because they are for asking questions from this particular concept and i tried to cover each and every aspect of this five generations of computers if you take screenshot of this particular thing it will help you before the exam you can revise these concepts easily otherwise for this particular self information you may need to search in some website in this for this particular self information you may need to search in some other website if you want to answer what is the type of operating system in third generation third generation computer you have to go to different resources but what is the advantage of this particular table this resource is self sufficient to recall all the concepts that are useful for exam fine same thing do with this also you see here what i told you these are the popular computer names across each generation these are the popular computer names across each generation okay what is our practice after looking at a computer name you should be able to recognize its generation after looking at a computer name you should be able to recognize its generation or if they give you some generation name you should be able to list all the computer names which are part of the generation i'm repeating it again there are two things one is if they give you a computer name you should be able to give its generation if they give you a generation you should be able to give example computers of that generation if you do this practice trust me you can get one mark easily they have already given this question twice or thrice what is their simple strategy they'll just give you one computer name they'll ask you for the generation or they may give which of the following computer computers belong to second generation or which of the following computers belong to first generation like this fine so task is very simple here just take the screenshot of this computer names what should be your plan simple just look at this computer name try to understand or try to find out from which generation this computer belongs to fine see here i have for your practice purpose i have given a matching kind of thing here so let us say we have listed five computer names here okay so since eni ac is first generation computer it will be mapped to this arrow mark 
ओके दिस एरो मार्क इज फॉर फर्स्ट जनरेशन कंप्यूटर दिस एरो मार्क इज फॉर सेकंड जनरेशन कंप्यूटर दिस एरो मार्क इज फॉर थर्ड जनरेशन कंप्यूटर एंड दिस एरो मार्क इज फॉर फोर्थ जनरेशन कंप्यूटर एंड दिस वन इज फॉर फिफ्थ जनरेशन आई हैव लिस्टेड फाइव कंप्यूटर्स हियर ओके देयर कैन बी मल्टीपल कंप्यूटर नेम्स इन ईच जनरेशन फॉर दिस प्रैक्टिस पर्पस व्हाट आई हैव डिड आई हैव टेकन वन कंप्यूटर नेम फ्रॉम ईच जनरेशन इफ आई क्लिक लेट अस से ईएनआईएसी ओके क्रोम बुक इज अ कंप्यूटर नेम व्हिच बिलोंग्स टू फिफ्थ जनरेशन Chromebook is a computer name which belongs to fifth generation. That's why Chromebook has been placed in fifth generation computer. In the same way, if I click here, what will happen? You can see ENI AC. It is the first ever computer that has been invented. It is related to first generation. That's why ENI ENI AC has been transferred to first generation. Then IBM seven not one. Okay, and now just try to understand this. In the previous slide, there were different numbers along with the IBM. X X means X has different values, and if you observe, seven not one is belongs to second generation. If the suffix is different, the computer can be belongs to some other generation. What I'm trying to say, just by looking at the IBM name, you cannot decide the generation. Why IBM is continuously striving to enhance their computers, so they release different versions. Just by looking at the company names, you cannot decide the generation name. Here IBM seven not one belongs to second generation. If the model number is different, even though IBM title is there, it may belongs to some other generation. Fine. Then TDC TDC three sixteen is related to third generation. Then CRA one this is related to fourth generation. Okay. So here what we have done, we have taken five different computer names. We try to map them with their generations. But what I am trying to say here. it's not about only those five computers i have listed nearly more than 20 computers here you should be able to recognize all these computer names and their generation generations i can give you the mapping but it doesn't allow you to study more just take the screenshot of these computer names and try to find out where these computers what is the generation of each computer that's why the, that uh, that's why uh, that's why uh, that's the way you can recall the concepts and revise the concepts fine so as i already told you evolution of computers mostly focusing on different generations of computer and examples of computers fine so before going to hardware let me re, uh, let me recall uh, let me revise this evolution of computers so you just try to understand one thing the first topic is evolution of computers what are the areas you need to focus first generation second generation third generation Fourth generation, fifth generation. What are the basic blocks that are being used in each generations? Fine. What are the years that they have been active? What are the example computers of each generation? What is the speed and performance of each generation? And what is the type of operating system? that that is that has been used in each generation okay and apart from this they are asking about some latest technology robot and their features okay if you see their particular question we have discussed kempa indra daksh and, and one more robot is there let me recall uh, isro has created one more robot called vyoma mitra okay so vyom means sky okay or space So Vyoma Mitra is a robot which has been created by ISRO for the space travel. Fine. So what I'm trying to say after analyzing the previous year questions, you need to understand what are the areas they are focusing on. Then only you can predict the future questions and answer them. Fine. So in the evolution of computers, I think I have listed all the major topics that need to be covered. What are the major topics? Generations of computers and this knowledge about each and every generation of the computer. And they are asking about some popular robots and their features. Okay, I gave you the examples of five five robots. I guess you may uh, you may search about other robots also. Okay, these are the five robots very famous. That's why I have discussed about them. So if you are uh, if you want to gain more knowledge, you can uh, search about other practical. Robots. There is a robot called Sophia also. It is a very popular robot across the world. Fine. So this is the way you need to and uh, this is the way you need to uh, study this topic. In the next question, we'll in the next chapter also we'll follow the same strategy. so the chapter is pyq on hardware okay here also what we will do we will see some previous year questions then 
we will understand what are the areas to be focused at the end based on the areas to be focused we will do some practice this practice will help you in two things one is revising previous year questions predicting upcoming questions revising previous year questions and predicting upcoming questions so based on our flow what is our next first step we should go through some previous year questions then we will understand okay these are the areas that they are focusing on so let us practice on these areas that is our strategy fine so evolution of computers is done so we have seen some previous year questions we understood what are the areas to be focused and we have practiced those areas in the same way we are going to learn hardware also then we are going to learn software also we are going to learn internet also so let us focus on the hardware now then ocr stands for okay it is a technology which is uh, which is based on some hardware okay so optical character recognition is the technology name even though it is looking so fancy have you filled omr sheet where you bubble the option let us say four options are there if you feel b as the answer you will bubble this now system understands that since the student has bubbled this particular b option he is considering b as the answer okay how it is doing the hardware is reading okay this bubble is marked so that means he is considering b as the answer let me evaluate whether b as the answer or not okay so whatever the technology that is being used for this omr sheet is optical character recognition fine then while answering this questions you should be able to recall different things qr codes bar codes you understood my strategy right it is very simple this year they have asked about omr sheet next year they may ask about qr code bar code or upi because all these are similar technologies all these are similar technologies what is the technology they will give some code which is not human readable but it contains some information it fine what is full form of upi unified payment trans, payment payment interface what are the bar codes they use some bar kind of things which have different thicknesses and qr codes that has some random image which cannot be understood by human but can be read by qr code scanners fine so our strategy is very simple whenever you see some question like this it is not only about recalling or understanding that question you should be able to understand the area where they are focusing on this year they have focused on ocr next year they may focus on qr codes bar codes or upi fine next question speaker is an example of in the starting of the session i already told you the most famous question from this particular topic is they give you a device they'll ask you whether it is a input device or output device or both this is a very popular question from this particular topic or what is the other possibility what is the other possibility from this question they may give you question like which of the following which of the following is a input device how they will give the options they give they will give three options as output devices but give one option as input device fine so two possibilities are there they will give you a device they ask you to categorize it otherwise they'll give you some options as devices devices as some options and they'll ask you to find which of the following is input device fine speaker is an example of okay whichever the device that gives output that will be considered as output device so here speaker is example of output device but are all the speaker output devices no if the if they give any smart speaker name like alexa which is uh, which is being produced by amazon or any smart speaker if they give some example device as smart speaker it acts as both input and output why because it takes some command from the human voice and it reacts to it so it is taking input from the human and it is giving some output in that case it is both input and output device but here they haven't mentioned any smart speaker they have just mentioned a normal speaker so we consider this normal speaker as output device but if it is a smart speaker the answer should be both input and output device fine then codes consisting of light and dark marks which may be optically read i already told you bar code because here they are mentioning light and dark codes if you see bar codes okay if you see bar codes how they will be there will be a thin line there will be a thick line in between there will be gaps like this right 
So light and dark marks. They are considering these empty spaces are light marks and these bars as dark marks. Okay. So I already told that's what I'm trying to say. In the first question, they have asked about OMR sheet. But here they have asked about barcodes. So next year they may ask about QR codes. Next year they may ask about UPI. Because all these technologies are uh, similar. You got the point, right? If they ask some question about this particular technology this year, next year they may ask about similar technology. That's why I'm asking you to recall all these concepts while solving this question. Then, which of the following is or are the basic units of your IIS computer? Okay. So it is related to hardware. You know, input is there, output is there. But how we are getting input from the output? We'll give it to some CPU. Fine. So this is the basic block diagram of any computer. Now, what they are asking? What are the basic units of IIS computer? So input output devices, central processing unit, main memory unit. Okay, and this CPU is connected to some memory. Right? Otherwise, where will CPU store the content that it has to operate? Fine. So in the basic IIS computer, input devices will be there, output devices will be there, and processor will be there. And to store the content for the processor, we use main memory. Fine. And main memory may take help from secondary memory also, some hard drive or something. Okay. But in the basic computer, these contents will be there. So answer is very simple. It, it consists of input devices, output devices. It consists of main memory. It consists of central processing unit also. Fine. So all of the options is the answer. Fine. Next year, they may ask about the subunits of CPU. What are the subunits of CPU? That is ALU, CU, arithmetic logical unit and control unit. They may ask you about the functionality of subunits also. What is the functionality of compute, uh, control unit? What is the functionality of arithmetic logical unit? You got the point, right? And CPU may consist of registers also. So what I am trying to understand here, this year they have asked the uh, entire basic block diagram. Next year, in this basic block, there are some sub-blocks also. Like CPU has ALU and CU and registers also. So they may ask you, they may ask you questions from this entire block diagram. It's not only recalling the question they have asked. It's about recalling, it's about recalling all the concepts that are related to this particular block diagram. Fine. Then select the smallest memory size. Okay. And this is also very popular concept here. What, are, what is the popular, uh, what is the thing here? Uh, the smallest unit is bit, that is 0 or 1. If you, sorry, okay, if you take 4 bits, that will be considered as Nibble. If you take 8 bits, that will be considered as byte. Now, if you take 1024 bytes, that will be considered as 1 kilobyte. Then, if you take 1024 kilobytes, that will be considered as 1 megabyte. If you consider 1024 megabytes, that will be considered as 1 gigabyte. If you consider 1024 gigabytes, it will be considered as 1 terabyte. Fine. So if you observe here, while solving this question, after comparing all these things, I can easily understand KB is smaller than any other option. But it's not only about that. You need to recall this entire concept. The smallest unit is bit, but in these particular options compared to all, all other three options, the smallest unit is kilobyte. That's why I have chosen kilobyte. Let us say if they mention byte in one of the in, in these options, then I should I shouldn't choose kilobyte because byte is smaller than kilobyte. Got the point, right? So while solving this question, what I need to recall, apart from answering this particular question, I need to recall this entire scaling. Then only my practice is perfect. Otherwise, you may not be able to answer new questions from this particular topic. Okay, let us see if any comments are there in my mobile. So I can reply them. If I find any comments in my mobile, I can reply them in the live chat. Just get my mobile ones. So we are continuously discussing. Let us try to focus on the replies also. Fine.
Okay, I think IPL is going. That's why no comments are there. If I find any comments, I'll try to give answers to them. Fine. Then let us go to next question. The mouse pointer moves erratically. If you see, the topic is related to hardware, so it can be about any. It can be about any hard uh, any device. So they may ask you questions related to keyboard also. They may ask you questions related to mouse also. They may ask you questions related to scanner also. Fine. If you see here, the mouse pointer moves erratically. What is the possible cause? Ball is dirty. This is the possible cause. Okay. If the mouse is not connected. Cursor will not be displayed at all. Okay, if the mouse is not installed, then also cursor will not be displayed. In the both cases, cursor will not be displayed at all. But if the cursor is displayed, if it is moving erratically, the reason is the mouse ball is dirty. And in the in the most recent mouses, we are not using ball at all. We are using some laser light kind of thing. Okay, but if it is using ball and if the ball is dirty, then what can be the cause? So uh, what what can be the consequence? It the mouse pointer is mouse pointer moves erratically. Fine. Then, what is the use of output device to store the data? We use memory. To view or print the data, we use output device. To scan the data, we use input device. Fine. To input the data, we use input device. So C and D are purposes uh, jobs of input devices. And to store the data, we use memory. To view or print the data, we use output device. So they are, since they are asking about output device, the answer should be B here, right? Which of the following key is a navigation key? I already told you earlier. They asked about the mouse. Now they are asking about the um, keyboard. Next year they may ask about the monitors also. What are the different monitors? What are the different printers? What are the different scanners? They may ask you about these concepts also. You got my point, right? It's not only about answering the existing questions. It's about Recalling the every concepts that are possible in this discussion, uh, in from this particular topic, fine. So navigation keys are related like related to arrow marks, fine. So page up, page down are four navigation keys. Like arrow marks are the related to navigation keys, and all others are not navigation keys, fine. Then a pixel is here. In the previous slide, I have shown you how bit, byte, nibble, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte are related. Here it is related to screen resolution. Pixel is the a computer program that draws a picture. No, it is not a software. A picture stored in secondary memory. No, the smallest resolvable. See the smallest resolvable memory unit is bit, but the smallest resolvable picture is pixel. Fine. Then one gigabyte. I already told you it is related to one zero two four megabytes. In the previous in the previous slide, I have I have already explained you this concept. The secondary storage device that follows the sequential mode of access is magnetic tape. Okay, what do you mean by sequential access? If the data is stored in zero, one, two, three, four manner before accessing four, I need to access all the three. Then only I can access four. This is sequential access. What is the random access? If I want to access four, I don't need to access all the previous things. I can directly go to four. So magnetic tape will store the uh, content in such a way. Before accessing the fourth fourth thing, we need to access all the previous things. Fine. Then, okay, this is the practice we can then simple thing. After the, after uh, looking at previous previous year questions, you should uh, you you understood one thing. They are focusing on the type of the device. So I have displayed some uh, some devices here. They will be mapped to their particular type. So smart speaker, I already explained you. It is both input and output device. That's why smart speaker has been placed to uh, move to that place. Then monitor is a uh, monitor is a output device. It cannot do input thing. Touch screen. It is both. See, see the difference between monitor and touch screen. They both are similar, but monitor cannot take input from the user, but touch screen take take input from the user. Both can display the output. That's why it has been um, placed in the both. Touch screen can take input also output uh, give output also, but mon uh, monitor can take input but cannot give output. Fine. Then. Scanner is a input. It cannot take out. It cannot give output. Keyboard is a input device, and printer is a output device. Fine. Then look at this one. Sequential and random memory. I already told you what is the difference between sequential memory and random memory. So here I have uh, mapped some devices. Since magnetic disk is disk, we can do random memory access. It has been moved to uh, random memory access. Magnetic tape is a sequential memory access device. That's why it has been moved to that place. Now, ROM we can do uh, random memory access. That's why it has been moved to this place. Fine. And memory size, I have already told you this entire concept. 
how memory things are related. Okay, this is the thing. Uh, 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 after terabyte, there is petabyte and exabyte also. Same relation. One zero two four. If you mu multiply one zero two four gigabytes, it will give you terabyte. If you multiply one zero two four terabyte, it will be petabyte. If you multiply one zero two four petabyte, it will be exa extra byte. Okay. So now I understood. Uh, now I understood one thing. In this one hour, I can give you a clarity what to study and how to study. We uh, and I told you there are four subtopics. What are those subtopics? Evolution of computers, hardware, software, and internet. So, I gave you a strategy. That is, we see previous year questions. Then we understand what are the areas to be focused. Then we have done some practice on that particular area. Okay. In with this strategy, we have completed evolution of computers and hardware also. Fine. And Yes, Academy has launched a course for this particular RRB JE. In for every subject, there are fourteen subjects, and one of them is basics of computer science. Computer science. Now, if you understand, we have followed the strategy. We have gone through the each and every previous year question. We understood the areas to be focused, and we have delivered the content which is much related to this preparation. Okay. If you understand what are the areas to be focused, that is more than seventy percent of the task. Okay. Remaining thirty percent is. Revising and understanding those topics. In this particular thing, our RRBJ course, which is launched by AS Academy, will help you for sure. Because just by looking at this particular sentences in the syllabus sheet, they just mention evolution, they just mention hardware, software, and internet. By just looking at this particular sentence, you cannot predict what can be asked. You cannot predict what can be asked. If you take our RRBJ course, which is launched by AS Academy, it can be the best ever resource. Let me tell you why. If you want to learn something about the hardware, the first problem is you don't understand what are the areas to be focused. Here, our course, which is self-sufficient, self-sufficient for the preparation, will help you. Hope you understood the point. Since we cannot continue the session, session is for honor. I have already gave you the stra uh, strategy and implementation for evolution of computers and hardware. Hardware. You can apply the same strategy for software and internet. To apply the same strategy for these two, these two topics. You can take the help from our RRBJE course, and if you feel that is not the only source, I am saying, but it can be the best source that you can take. Why? Because we have done this work for you. We have gone through the previous year questions. We understood the areas to be focused, and we made our content based on this strategy. So, if this work is completed by your trainer, this can be done by you. If you don't take our course, you can you can do all the three tasks. Okay? Since we have already done first two tasks. You can do the third task, being a student. Fine. Now let me check if any queries are there. Fine. If any queries are there, I can answer them. Okay, I don't, I don't find any queries. They are not updated here, or no one has commented. Anything can be possible, but my suggestion is very simple. I have given you a strategy. What is the thing? Go through the previous year questions, understand the areas to be focused, and practice. If you take our RRBJE course, what is the advantage? We have already done both the tasks. Like we have gone through the previous year questions, we understood the areas to be covered, and we have delivered the content. If you focus on that content, you can only practice for your exam. That's why it, it helps you. Fine. Thank you.